it's Friday again uh, caught me a bit by surprise uh, the public holiday which is Wednesday had me thinking that today was Thursday <laughs> yeah so we get right to it uh, we're doing an update and this is uh, Butch sent me uh, videos of a tractor uh, that they use down by the river to cut the reeds it surely looks much easier than having to cut it with a little handheld machine uh, they got quite far with it uh, but Dave Hagen was so generous to give me some of his photographs that he took from a drone so we can see it from the air uh, Just a little update to show you how that's going This past Sunday we had quite a bit of fun at Souls. The musical fellowship got together and that's just musicians from the town north and south, east, west. They came together to show off a little bit of their musical skills, playing together, entertaining the, the crowd that was there. It was a fantastic evening, fun was had by all and I look forward to having more of these uh, evenings. Someone in the village called me a, a snot-nosed amateur so I took that to heart and I gave my camera to a real amateur which is my 12 year old boy that did the footage of this event. He had so much fun and yeah, uh, as an amateur he did pretty well. This is what it looked like. And remember, please advertise on Village TV. Our rates are ridiculously affordable. Please send us a mail so we can send you packages of what is available. The Swap Shop. Do you know what it is? I didn't. I've been here almost a year. So I had a mail from Linda. She is in charge of the swap shop uh, down at the community center or right next to the community center. I went there to have a look what it's all about and this is what we saw. Hi, I'm Linda Schradon and uh, behind you you can see our swap shop. This is a session for adults today. Uh, we have it twice a month once a month for the kids and once a month for the adults and what it was all about is um, we our, our customer base we try and 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 um, supply items to our uh, jobless workless 
people in the, in the village and uh, to try and give them some dignity back. What they do is they collect, through the month, they collect recyclables uh, such as glass, uh, plastic, paper, tins, anything like that. And they bring it here, we weigh it. As you can see, there's the weigh station behind us there. We're actually waiting for our recycle truck to come from the municipality so that we can start the session. Uh, we weigh the stuff for them and they get tokens uh, according to the weight. Then they go inside and we are very much, very much reliable on the goodness and the uh, generosity of our villagers to give us all the excess clothing, second-hand clothing, uh, used um, uh, household goods such as um, towels, linen, anything like that for people that don't have much. Through the years, the, the generosity has been amazing of all the people giving us stuff. Uh, and we thank you and please don't stop doing that, especially the new people coming into town, uh, downsizing or uh, decluttering, anything that you don't know what to do with, we do know what to do with it. So please help us in that respect. I will collect from you anytime. The other section that we have inside here is stationery, school stationery specifically for our kids, as well as toiletries. And that kind of stuff does not come secondhand, unfortunately. So we are reliable on monetary donations for that. Uh, in the past, we used to get a grant from the municipality. Uh, we don't always get that grant, unfortunately. But uh, what we do get is, um, we have also run by Stanford Conservation is the, um, the Think and Drink evening once a month. So we get some of that money and then some of the stuff that we get donated is really, really good stuff. So we have junk teak every two, month, every two weeks in the month. We have a junk teak table on a Saturday morning. So um, we, can, we can get money from that. So that with that we buy our toiletries and our stationery. But ultimately we're asking our villagers to join the Conservation Trust. Uh, the membership is 200 Rand a, a, a year for our household. And with that money, not only does the bundle pack get uh, kept in a pristine condition, we thank you for your generosity and, and, and we hope this gives you a little bit of an insight of what we do here and how many of these people are here that really, really do need something that you don't want anymore. And then as usual, we've got Green Fever with Warren Stechman. He is all for division and dividing and multiplying. What does that all mean? Well, let Warren tell you. This week, we'll be splitting and dividing, not just for our politicians, but for us gardeners too. Win over friends and influence people by giving them your excess plants, of course. And best of all, you can rejuvenate your garden. So it's August and it's a perfect time of year to do some splitting and dividing in the garden. Splitting and dividing is essential for rejuvenating plants. It's a way to multiply your plants uh, cheaply and efficiently. And also, if you're shopping in a garden center, it is a way to get more bang for your buck. So first things first, you will need a couple of tools when you go into the garden to take out your old agapanthus clumps or your dietes or your irises, whatever it is. Make sure that you put the spade in uh, away from the root ball of the plant so that you don't actually cut through the root ball of the plant like that. So you want to start more or less where the leaves end and there's a kind of a, they call it a drip line and you put the spade in there and push back, lift up. Some of the tools you're going to need are things like a wood saw, a very handy for splitting and dividing, especially when you've got dense clumps of roots, you can position that in there and just saw straight through. Some people use a spade and then they just apply their body weight and split that way. Um, you can use sacketeers for smaller plants. Um, a knife I find very useful, especially for things in bags or pots that have come from a nursery. You don't really need the punga, it just looks cool. So, first of all, let's try and get you some more bang for your buck. Everyone likes to save money and a lot of us have big gardens and big areas to fill. So when you go shopping, really look at the plants you're buying. And the clue as to what you can split and divide 
is uh, generally, if it's a grass or grass-like plant, that's one clue. Another one, if it's a clump-forming plant, that's another clue. And thirdly, if it's a ground cover and when you touch it, it's sort of rooted all over the container or bag, and that's a third clue. So uh, this is Ophiopogon Kyoto Dwarf. It's a beautiful ground cover. People often use it between paving stones or around trees and always seem to need a lot of it. This is a particularly big bag that we do sell in the nursery. Now I'm gonna just pull it open so that you can see uh, what this looks like. Now the trick is to pull this apart, try and keep as many roots as possible on this plant and then we're going to separate it and I'll show you what those look like in a second. It may be intimidating when you're confronted with a big clump of roots like this so I like to start off by trying to smash it that doesn't always work but I'm going to give it a try here now and so there we go uh, that'll sit nice and tight on the table I can use the saw and basically slice straight through the middle like I'm slicing through a piece of cake. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because it's easier to work with a smaller portion than a big portion. So I'm gonna put that to one side and now I've got a little piece. And the moment I can get my hands in there and start wiggling my fingers in, I start to get happy because that means that it's going to be able to split apart very nicely into individual plants. The smaller you make these individual plants, uh, the, the more densely you will end up planting them because the longer you're gonna wait for each clump to grow. So if you want slightly bigger clumps, don't, don't mind having a clump that big, say where I've got three individual shoots. So that's a bigger clump. And that, for, for a garden, I would rather have that than just this. Um, if you're propagating into pots, then one of these is fine. Bigger plants like Agapanthus and Clivias, uh, again, you could use a saw or a spade to chop a piece off. I'm going to show an example of a clivia that uh, was transplanted, it's just been split a few days ago, but uh, this is now an example of perhaps what not to do. First of all, stay away from plants that are in full bloom. And if by chance it's unavoidable and it has a flower, remove the flower. So this should have been, this should have been taken off, make sure your tools are clean. Um, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, and uh, there we have these leaves. Now what's happened is they've, they've, their roots have been disturbed, they've lost turgor pressure, they're starting to flop over, they can't really do their job properly. In the cool weather and with something like Agapanthus, when I split it, I like to leave them and see if they're going to stand up before I cut them back because that's going to give me a sort of half a plant for quite some time until they regrow. But in this situation where the plant is already taking strain, I will not hold back. I will happily cut this in half. I'm going to stay out of the white juicy growth at the bottom. I'm going to try and cut it up here where the green growth is and slice that off. Now all that's done is I'm helping this plant to stay upright. It's going to be able to photosynthesize while those roots recover and it starts to develop again. Achillea is a wonderful herb and flowering plant for, for the garden. Um, and uh, it's a good example of a ground cover type plant that would benefit from being split and divided. Now, even in the nursery, plants get old and tired, and this happens in your garden too. Now, you can see this clump does not look good. Uh, and about two weeks ago, I split one of these up, so I pulled this apart and I followed the same procedure as I did earlier with the grass. You can see the little plants uh, inside there. And I split one plant up into probably about 12 or 15 and I replanted them and I just want to show you the new growth compared to the old growth. This is Tilbachia wild garlic. A lot of people ask me if it repels snakes. Many years ago I worked for a place called Fish River Sun and Impequeni Sun was my first ever job and uh, there were a lot of snakes there and so I'm fairly convinced it does not repel snakes. Uh, but furthermore, uh, I recall very clearly Graham Leach, the guy I used to work for, telling me, Warren, you have to split and divide your Tilbachia. And I had hundreds of thousands of these plants everywhere. And so this is another plant that would benefit from being split and divided for rejuvenation and has the added benefit of being able to then, uh, you can give it to your friends or you can fill gaps in the garden uh, or give the excess to me, whatever whatever works for you. So as a propagation technique, this even extends to ferns. And again, the clue is look for clump forming ferns. Uh, let me see if I've got a good example here. Here we go. Uh, we have a remora, a leather leaf fern. 
and look inside there, see all those stems coming out the ground. Do not try this with a tree fern or something that has a single stem. But a plant like this, you can easily take that out. Um, I wouldn't split that up too wildly, but maybe I want to make two pot plants. I like to feel my, my way around with my fingers and look and see where I am. I can see uh, more or less it has a natural break uh, in the middle there. It's just happened that way. And I'm going to cut through with the knife and voila, I now have two ferns instead of one. And if you weren't impressed with the diversity of this technique when it comes to propagation, as far as the ferns were concerned, it extends even to succulents and cacti. So here I have a beautiful aloe aristida, and uh, I've had it for about a year now, and it's lovely and full in the pot. Uh, there's nowhere else for this plant to go. I might as well uh, divide it and start a few new clumps, or I can divide them up into individual pieces and uh, then plant them into individual pots. So the pot will just slide off easily. There we go. Um, that soil's come right off. You can see it hasn't got a very big root system. How easy is this, people? Look at this, look at this. You don't have to really think this through. You don't have to do anything. This plant's just propagating itself. One of the decisions you're gonna to have to make when you split and divide your clumps is whether or not to cut them back. Now, something like a canna, I would say cut it back. It's a no-brainer, you don't, this, this plant will regrow from the bottom, so chop those off and split the base. Uh, Agapanthus in the garden where you're doing something that has, uh, as, is of aesthetic concern, perhaps there, um, if you're splitting the clumps not into individual pieces but into clumps of one, two or three plants, you can get away with leaving them uh, un unpruned, so don't cut them back. If you're splitting them into individual plants, which we in the industry call X open ground, and it's just a single stem, then I would recommend cutting them back and I'll demonstrate that for you now. This is not an agapanthus plant, uh, however, uh, it's a good example of, of what we're talking about here. And so what we would do is we would dig them up, there'd be a single stem, and again, we would cut them back so that the leaves can stand independently and not wilt and fall over. Um, and there we go. You see, now that doesn't look natural and it'll take a while for this plant to, to regrow. So possibly it's a better idea when you've got the opportunity to split them into bigger clumps and plant two or three together and avoid having to cut them back. But if you see they're wilting and falling over, then do cut them back. Put your business on the visual map. Advertise with Village TV. You can send me a mail at the following email that you see at the bottom of your screen. I've got many packages available to showcase what you do uh, in a visual form. And with that, there are lots of extras. Please email me. Let me tell you all about the way you can advertise on Village TV. Okay, now that I'm awake, Best I get editing so I can post uh, the fourth episode of Village TV. I'll be seeing you tonight at the Sunset Market. I'll be banging on a drum with a, with a crew of the, what are they called, the Old Hat. I'll be playing with them some blues tunes. Whatever they play, I'll play with them. Oh